Uh, my name is Camille. Uh, so I've been working on Chromium for more than five years. Uh, and today with Colin, we're going to talk about a big effort that's ongoing uh, in Chrome, which is called certification. Uh, and that is um, a large re-architecture. Well, we're making a big <laughs> new architecture uh, for the broader. OK, so. Um, uh, can you move the speakers? Um, yeah, that's <laughs> um, well, <laughs> too bad, I guess. So, uh, one of the things we've always wanted in Chrome is to have isolation from an architectural point of view. So, a um, bit of definition of that is we can see roughly a four kinds of isolation that are increasingly harder to achieve but brings more benefits. So the first one is at the source code level, um, but that's just like good engineering. If you have proper isolation, well-defined APIs, you can reuse your code, and that is all very nice. The second one we have in Chromium is what we could call runtime isolation. So basically, by putting things in different processes uh, and having them sandboxed, um, you guard um, the browser against crashes and exploits, which is nice. Um, the thing we don't have in Chromium is what we could call component uh, isolation. So as uh, we run on more and more platforms and there are more and more uh, APIs we want to support uh, and more and more features, um, we are thinking that it might be interesting long, long term if uh, the user would only download the bits of the app uh, we need. So for example, if you have a very low-end phone, support for uh, VR is probably not very useful to you. Uh, so it's this kind of thing. But right now, everything is bundled uh, into one big executable. So yeah. So as I said, we don't have that right now, but that is something we would like in the future. Uh, and finally, we can define something as product isolation, where different teams working on different products are based uh, on the same source code, have different repository and really schedule. And that's really how you become a computing platform and not just a, a web browser. So for us, the particular issue is having both Chrome OS and Chrome uh, share the, the same source code repository uh, and really schedule. OK, so that's what we would like. But uh, And yeah, again, for us, uh, in terms of isolation that we have, the process model is really like, the cornerstone, that's the cornerstone of the security model. Uh, we put things into different process, uh, many of which are sandbox, so that we isolate uh, them. They don't, uh, we regulate um, the access they can have between each other in a very in a core uh, browser process, which talks to an APC system with the rest of the tabs where the untrusted web contents run. Um, and same, we have a GPU process which is displaying stuff on the screen. Uh, again, because we don't want um, the tab that, have hack that have access to the untrusted web contents to have access to the GPU as well. Um, so that's roughly Chrome Edities and what we want. Uh, but to get there, we have to deal with what we have right now, which is basically organic groups. So one thing to realize is that when we did not really over-design Chrome. Um, there was, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, purposely, uh, it, it was not done that way. And um, at one point, people realized that they have this huge directory of features, and this is not like uh, handy to test, to make changes to. So we did a thing that we called the um, content refactor. Uh, so basically, we defined a layer of, that would be called content, and that is the implementation of the web platform, and we both stuff on top of that. So the first two things was uh, Chrome, um, so we have like a Chrome layer and a content layer, and we also build Content Shell, which is like a very simple thing that shows you a tab that implements all of the web platform features. And then we found that this was actually relatively handy, so we could build Chromecast on top of that. Uh, which, of course, is a very different use case from a web browser. Um, we moved the Android web view to be built on top of content so that uh, it was simpler for us to have the web view also get all new uh, web features. And since it was open source, we also get 
um, other people to use what we built, like Opera uh, embedded content and Electron also embedded content. And Electron then led to a bunch of Electron apps, uh, which by now really don't have anything to do with the web browsers um, as Chrome uh, as Chrome is. So um, really, we've become somewhat more of a platform than a web browser. And um, this is putting us a bunch of issues. Hey, everyone can hear me OK? Great. Um, thanks, Kimmy. So yeah, so I'm going, I and Rob are going to talk a little bit about where we're looking to go from here. So, um, so basically, Kimmy talked up through the content refactor. And so this picture, I know exactly who this picture uh, originally must come from, which is Ben Gujar, one of the original TLs of, of Chrome. And the reason I know why is because when I started on service vacation, at some point very early on, I sent an email to him and Darren and a couple of other folks being like, has anyone done a dependency analysis to like discover like sort of like, you know, what the major services would be and what we should work on first, because we should depend on which and et cetera. And I got a message back from him, which in Gmail, the snippet preview just showed, yes, I have done this. And I was like, oh, that's fantastic. And I opened it up, and it was this picture, minus the whole cut in the middle. So um, literally, it was the same picture. So, um, so basically, post content refactor, um, so this symbolizes the cutting out of content. So that, that was really nice and like really like hugely valuable. But um, there are still some problems. It always seems like there are still some problems somehow. Um, and so basically, the content API wasn't designed. It was just like kind of wherever the knife cut. Um, it's very large and needs to be running for the whole lifetime of the app. It's, got a, it's basically everything related to the core of Chrome as a web browser. The core meaning, you know, minus all the flashy stuff like Translate and et cetera, but that's still a lot, especially as people are wanting to use Chromium for things that look less and less like web browsers. And because those APIs aren't really designed, um, they change all the time. So I don't know if anyone's not from Google and uses the content API or whatnot, but you know, maybe this is not news to you. They change all the time, right? And so, so people even within Chrome team, within Google, are kind of, uh, have been experiencing these as real problems. And a couple of years ago, some very senior uh, Chrome engineers basically got together and said, OK, it's finally time to actually really take a step back and, and look at this challenge holistically. And so this is where the certification project was born. And the certification project, uh, this conceptual system layer tape is in no way rocket science. This is basically saying we should have a foundation layer that has like kind of the core services, the, 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 the core stuff that you might need, like the network as a service, like you know, um, web browsing as a service, our security policies for uh, web browsing as a service. You have frameworks and runtime that live above those, and then you have applications that build on whatever frameworks and runtimes you know there are. So this basically this is what we're talking about the certification project. At the end, the services should be this foundation um, layer, which is really a composition of the various services. And then, as the most important and canonical example of um, of a framework or runtime, you have of course Blink which would live here, and then applications you have whatever, anything that you want that lives up on top. So to go into a bit more detail on what each of these layers could look like, um, Rob is going to talk, chat for a bit. Do I have this on? Yes, I think so. All right, so this is, it's, it's fitting that this, this is called a layer cake because it came from Ben, and Ben likes to make cake, actually. Um, and he, he divided. He also up. likes to talk about layer cakes a lot, maybe for the same reason. That's true. Um, but you know, it's like he has this his his photo inside of Google for the the, the team organization thing is Ben eating cake. Um, so he divided up the world into these little boxes, and so we have all the sort of core foundation bits down at the bottom, and we have like the various consumers of the services in the middle, and then we have like the actual apps that sit on the top, and. Uh, so I should like, speak to this. So the basic idea is that you know, Chrome is an application. Uh, you know, Chromecast, and essentially the cache shell of the application. 
you have, well, Chrome OS system UI, otherwise known as Ash, as an application that would be sort of separated from the Chrome application at long last. And then there's like a series of sort of foundational technologies, Blank, the PDF viewer, um, some other stuff. And then there's, there's sort of all our kind of base services. Um, and on the next slide, there, <coughs> we've made the ones that are actually being worked on in red. Um, there's a network service, I think, is launched, launching? Launching. 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 Okay. Launching. Um, <coughs> there's a navigation service. It's launched. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a, there's, there's the compositor and GPU services that's called Biz, and that's launching or launched, depending on what piece of it you're talking about. Um, a Windows Server portion, and that this bundle of things together that used to be called Muse or the Mojo UI service. Some of you may have heard of this. There's an entity service. Someone, what's your, you did it? Yes, it's done. It's in progress. Okay, so the red ones are, are done, and the green ones are, uh, I guess the file system is finished, right? Yeah, I would say yeah. The, the red ones are major ones in progress in various stages. The service manager portion is like the master that kicks off all the other services, and I think it's, it's in design, because it's sort of blocked on all the other bits. Um, <clears throat> so, where's the rest? Ah, network service. So the idea is, of course, to use Chrome's network stack without any of the browser parts. And why would you want to do this? Um, well, it, you know, increases robustness, but it also lets you run PWAs without a head, and that reduces their footprint. And, oh, it's beta 50%. Yeah. And the UI service is the part that I've been working on, and, and supposedly someday in the far future, it will let us decouple a Chrome OS like Ash, the Chrome OS UI from the rest of the browser. Uh, that's a sort of aspirational goal, and so it will happen later. And, and so I have this big picture about the part I work on, it's kind of busy, but um, more, more layer cake pictures, right? Okay. So there's like Chrome and it has some pieces in it, and I've already talked about Ash and the Chrome UI, and these are both dependent on uh, Aura, which is the original Chrome window management layer, and then that sits on top of the compositor and the GPU, right? So <clears throat> we had this plan to do this f version one, which this is like a little history lesson in miniature, where the idea was to separate the browser process from the Ash process and have that sit on top of the Muse process, and the Muse process would look like a traditional um, compositing window system a la Wayland or the uh, surface flinger kind of idea where you have um, window management and compositing and GPU all together in one process and you have like separate clients. Um, that got altered for a variety of reasons. Uh, teams were divided, there was you know excitement meetings. And what we ended up with is the Viz team went off to build this part that is separate and so we have we have made this Viz service that we saw in the previous picture, and we've moved the green box from there over to here, I guess, sorry, from there to there. And I don't know how that's like, little 10 person years of work to move the little green box. Um, <laughs> and then um, the wind, the- The slide, it only took me two seconds. I know, I, I just like, stand. <laughs> well, like this is about as much formality as it the whole process started with. I drew pictures on the board and said, let's move that box over here. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then uh, down on this sort of the other path, right? It's, it switched away from the Muse way and had this alternate world called Windows Server 2. And Windows Server 2 is a sort of respin of the, it's a subset of Muse where uh, the Chrome UI uses um, a version of Aura written for Muse, and then Ash uses the original Aura implementation, and this is Windows Server 2 is just a proxy between the remote Aura and the local Aura. And then someday this piece here, the Chrome UI and the Aura Muse, it will pop out into another process, and this, all the rest of this will, will remain, and that's the sort of convergence of, or the, the end goal of the separation of Ash and um, Ash and Chrome, and All over right, to so over to Colin.
So uh, I'm going to finish off. Um, we won't keep revolving around and around. We're, we're, we're done now. So just um, a couple more of the major efforts that are um, underway. So it's an identity service, which um, I'm deeply involved in. And so here, basically, the use case is to access the user's Google identities outside the browser. This is an ex interesting example of you go back to those two architecture photos that I had, the one that was like kind of a spaghetti with the middle cut out, and the other that was actually like a, just a sensible set of layers. This, this is one, um, historically, the, the part of the code base that deals with this has been quite high up. Like essentially, it's been like a browser feature. But really, where we're looking to push this now is down into that foundation layer because this is one of the foundation services that will let you build apps of various kinds, whether they be a browser or whatnot. So, so, so it's interesting. There's a real kind of standing things on their head uh, element to this whole umbrella project to me. And so the status is, um, so we built a service so you can access um, Google identities from out of, out, out of process via um, Mojo IPCs, but um, actually using it globally in the browser is a huge project. So that, that's um, ongoing now and is going to be ongoing for some time. Are Sergio and Mario here? Or um, Mario's here. So um, yeah, so a couple of Agalia folks are starting to work with us on it, and that's, that's very exciting. So thank you. And, um, and the content service, which Camille is deeply involved in. So this is massive and um, very exciting. And so basically, the idea is um, display web content um, without the browser being live. So you're, for example, you're in maybe Chrome OS system UI, and it needs to display some help page. And that help page, we want to render it via live web content as a simple example. Another is a cross-platform um, Chrome web view. So this is like a very aspirational um, example. So don't go home from this talk and be like, oh, like Google's building a cross-platform Chrome web view. It's going to be out like tomorrow or something. But you know, it's a kind of an interesting North Star to have. And so this project is, is so interesting and massive. So there's, there's um, quite a bit of design exploration um, aspect to it, unsurprisingly. And so now to finish, um, I just want to zoom out a little bit and, and talk about kind of these efforts and, and efforts like them in Chromium and how we're approaching them. So as you can imagine, this is all very daunting, right? So each one of these efforts stretches across all of Chromium. Chromium is really large. And Chromium is getting larger all the time, right? And so, there, so for each one of these, there are hundreds of engineers that are constantly adding code the old way. And you can't tell them to just stop, right? Like that's, that's not an option. So, so you have to keep the thing shipping, and people have to keep building their features. And until you're ready, they're going to keep building their features the old way, et cetera. So how are we tackling this challenge? Do we just stop? Do we just say, OK, Chromium's too big. We're not going to make kind of transformational architectural changes to it anymore. So if we do that, then we're kind of stuck in place. So, um, so basically, what we're looking at is a kind of uh, meta strategy in a way where we're looking at surging towards success. And so what we mean by that is we have a whole bunch of these projects. And so you have a core set of folks that are sort of working across um, on these various projects at different stages. And the idea is to get a project ready to topple. So its dominoes are kind of in a row. And then um, you coalesce resources on it to knock it over so that it doesn't just uh, um, extend forever. And so anyone, if anyone was involved with a network service, you can see this as a very concrete example of how we push the network service to Canary um, in, a, in a much uh, smaller time frame than I think most people would have guessed or been ready to bet on. And um, so, so talking about the network service in particular, so Agalia helped um, a ton with that. And that was really um, critical. So I, I didn't personally work on the network service, but the people who did tell me that Agalia was absolutely critical to us, uh, to Chromium's getting out the network service in that kind of time frame. So um, that's very, very cool. I had Canary in all of these slides. And um, Doug, who's, who's leading all of service vacation, commented everywhere being like, no, not Canary, beta. It's now beta. It's beta, like as of like two days ago or something. 
um, at the time that he reviewed them. So, so that he's super excited, and we're all super excited about that. And as I said, um, we now have some folks that are extending to collaborate on identity, and that's really cool because that's also something like there are literally like hundreds and hundreds of inclusions that are going to need to be converted to a new public um, API, and et cetera. It's the kind of task that we have for these projects um, across Chromium. And so we're, we're excited. We're excited about this kind of model um, more broadly for Chromium. So there's servicification, but there's, there's also, there are many, many large architectural changes that we would like to make that have this kind of aspect to them. So Blink Onion Soup is one example for anyone who's involved with that. That was basically cutting out layers that were only historical artifacts, essentially, between Blink and um, Chromium. Um, we have things like uh, Lucky Luke, which was a new, better task scheduler, which involved going through and, and, and migrating all of Chromium's code that posted tasks and, and all these kinds of things. And we really care about the long-term health of this code base. We think that it's going to be around um, for a long time. You know, it's very, very expensive to build a new browser engine now. The thought of doing so is, is very daunting. So the ones that exist, uh, I mean, they're, they're going to be around, right? And Chromium is going to be around. And we want to continue to be able to do, uh, make these kinds of changes and invest in the, the long-term health of the code base. And so for certification and beyond, this kind of surge model and these kinds of collaborations are something that we're quite excited about. So um, we'll all be here. Um, so Camille and I will be here through the end of the day tomorrow. Rob? Be here at the end of the day Wednesday. End of the day Wednesday. So please uh, come find any of us if you want to chat or et cetera. Um, later today, I think at 5, is that right maybe, Martin? The, I, I think at 5 there's a breakout session, which is this um, uh, anyone who embeds Chromium, wants to embed Chromium, et cetera. So if you're interested, um, come to that. You know, that obviously has kind of um, conceptual overlaps with the project that we're on here. So on behalf of Camille and Rob, uh, thanks.